people of God. Hallelujah. It's good to be back with you. Hey, we're going to continue our teaching today on faith sees the answer. Well, let me do this in case this is your first time watching. I'm Pastor Raynard Sands. I'm the pastor of Be Like Jesus Ministries here in the great Pacific Northwest of the United States of America. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in with us. We're going to continue our study. We're going to have a good time today. So look, this is what I need you to do. I need you to get your Bible, your great textbook, the Bible. And then I need you to have a pen and some uh, a pen and some paper, something to take notes. Well, let's pray, make our daily confession and let's get into the word. So Father, right now in Jesus name, first of all, we just want to thank you. Glory be to God. Thank you for this opportunity to share the great and precious word of the living God. I pray, Father, that you give us ears to hear. I pray and I thank you for all of those that are tuning in. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're my teacher, you're my God, and you're going to help me to teach this word in simplicity and accuracy to meet the needs of the people. And then, Father, I thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that come against us in judgment shall be condemned. So right now, in Jesus' name, I just bind every outer word, every corrupt communication, every false accusation, every plot, every plan, every strategy, every maneuver that the devil would try to bring against me and all of those that are watching. I declare and I decree that none of those things should come to pass or be manifested in our lives. But right now, in Jesus' name, we just release the wisdom of God, revelation, knowledge of God, the healing power of God, the mercy of God, love and forgiveness of God. Just the whole goodness of God be manifested in each and every one of our lives this day in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Okay, let's get your Bibles. Come on, get your Bibles. You know what to do around here. Get them up in the air. Wave them like you really care. And let's make this confession together. You guys ready? Okay, here we go. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. Let's go to our foundation scriptures. Now we are, we already left the gate. We already, we up in the sky, we flying and now we coming and we're about to get to our destination in this on, uh, Faith sees the answer. I was talking to my technician this morning before we got ready to start uh, coming on the air. And we were saying that we're about to land this. I don't know. We might have to circle around, but we're geared to bring this bird down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to Proverbs chapter 4. And let's look at verses uh, 20 through 22. That's our foundation scripture. It says, my son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. I'm telling you, that prescription right there could keep you and I living in the freedom of God all the days of our life. If you just follow that prescription right there. I'm telling you, when I when I really begin to get that in my spirit and I understand that I understood that God is your word, you'll say, I got to take and take heed to what you're saying. Pay, to pay attention to your word. Did, did, do you hear what I said? Pay attention to what? His words. Man, if we just do that, that simple thing of paying attention to the word of God, it will forever change your life. Okay, now last time I was with you, we were in Hebrew chapter 13. So I want to go there. Hebrew chapter 13. And uh, we was on verse 5 and 6. So let's pick up from there. In Hebrew 13, I'm reading from the King James Bible. In Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, it says this. Hallelujah. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness. 
and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Let's stop there for a second. What a blessing. What a promise. God said that he would never leave me or you. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake. Come on. Come on, church. What, what are we afraid of? God is with us. Jesus said he would never. That's a promise. And I want to ask you this. Do you think God will break his word? No, he promised you and I, I don't care what we ever go through, whatever we're going through, that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Ooh, glory be to God. Now, let's 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 go back here and let's look at uh, let's go to verse six. It says so that we may boldly say, see, we, you and I knowing that God would never leave us nor forsake us, that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Why? How can, why can we boldly say that? Because the Lord is with us. He will never leave us and he will never forsake us. Glory be to God. What a promise. What a promise that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Now, the last time I was with you, I think the last thing I said to you was wrong thinking. Okay. Wrong believing and wrong talking will defeat you wrong thinking if you're taking notes you want to put this down see if you're thinking wrong you if you wrong believing if you believe in wrong and if you're talking wrong it will defeat you the devil can't defeat you because jesus already has defeated the devil for you. I'm going to say that again. A lot of you think, oh, the devil's got me and he's chasing me and he's doing this. No, 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 no. You and I, we enforce the devil to feed on him. We remind him what our elderly brother, our Lord and our Savior, our King, what Jesus already did for him or already did to him and did for us. And what is that? The devil is already defeated. He's already defeated. The devil can't defeat you because Jesus already has defeated the devil for you. Satan doesn't defeat you. You defeat yourself. Or if he does, you permit him to do so. It is a consent of ignorance. A lot of time we do it because it's a consent of ignorance. The devil cannot defeat. He's already defeated. If you let the devil defeat you, you allow him to. And a lot of it is because we don't know our proper place or what God has already provided for us. God has given us his word. Ooh, glory. And then let me say this while I'm at it. A lot of times it happens to people. They want a word from God. They want a word from God. He's given us his word. It's the Bible. A lot of people like to be led, I, I, I call it, they like to be led by prophecy. And nothing, we're not against none of that. We believe in the nine gifts of the Spirit. And, but God never told you and I to be led by prophecy. He told us to be led by His Spirit. And the Spirit and the Word always agree. No matter who's talking to you or who's talking to me, it has to be the Word of God. I don't care if an angel, bright light, appeared to you and told you something. But you got to find out where is it in the scripture. I tell people, I don't care if Jesus himself appeared to me. Give me scripture and verse. Why? So I want to know that it's Jesus. Because many people, people say, oh, an angel appeared to me and all of that. But remember what the apostle Paul said? He said, if I preach this gospel, any other gospel or anyone else, angels, anything else, he said, anything different than this word, let them be a curse. And we have religious organizations. Oh, an angel appeared to somebody. Yeah, we know that wasn't God. That wasn't an angel of God because that, there's doctrine or what they believe, the books they follow are not in line with the word of God. I know some of you may not like that, but that's what the word says. You either going to get to the place where you believe what God says or you're going to be deceived. You and I. So God has given us his word to direct us so our believing will be right. If you want your believing right, stick with what the word of God says. Come on, church. I tell you, come on, brothers and sisters. I say this almost every week. K-I-S-S. -S, keep it simple, saints. 
We do not have to complicate this. People get into deception. People get deceived because they want to see a whole bunch of stuff and they want to do stuff. Look, we love that. We want to come with the demonstration of the power of God. We don't want to come in persuasive speaking, but we want to come with the demonstration of the power of God, looking to God, putting out trust in God, doing what they said they can't do, cast out devil, but we still stick with the word of God. We don't go running off because people are doing this and doing that. We want to make sure the Spirit of God is there and they're being led by the Spirit. How do we know if they're led by the Spirit? They're going to stay and do things that's in line with the Word of God. Come on, saints, you have that? If you're somewhere and you listen to people and, 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 and you under what I call, I, I call it witchcraft, manipulation, and people telling you don't listen to them faith teachers or those prosperity teachers or them healing preachers and all of that. Well, what do the words say? You check me out. Everything I'm telling you, get your Bible out. That's why we tell you to bring your Bible. See if what I'm telling you lines up with the Bible or not. Because church, we have to grow up. We have to stop chasing these things. You know, we all went through the... Uh, I call it the pandemic. You know, more and more information is coming out that this thing was set up. It was planned. Okay. And people was running around, especially Christians running around almost like with chickens with their head off and didn't know what to do. We know what to do. We have the word of God. Church, we know we're going to put our trust in God. We're going to believe God. You see, I tell people, do you really believe this? Or do you not? Do you believe the Lord? You know, every sickness, every disease germ, every virus that touches your body dies instantly. See, fear is the force of the enemy. I tell people this stuff was pushed to bring fear. Faith is trusting in the power of God. Fear is being ruled by the devil because God has not given you and I the spirit of fear but a power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. If our thinking is right and our believing is right, our talking will be right. I'm going to say that again. If your thinking is right, your believing is right, your talking will be right. Hallelujah. See, the Lord is my helper. The Lord is is my strength. I boldly say that. What, how are you going to do this? The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my strength. When I'm doing things here at the church or doing things in ministry or, or even teaching, I have to trust the Spirit of God to lead me. He's my helper. He's my strength. And if I'm doing something and the Lord wants, the, uh, I'm not doing it the right way he wants me to do, he corrects me, the Word of God. He used the Word of God to correct me. But the Lord is my helper. I can't do this in myself. I trust the Lord. I trust the Lord. Faith says, not only does faith seize the answer, but faith says the answer. See, when you see, faith sees the answer. When you see that answer, you meditate and you're thinking about, now you're going to say it. You, it's going to come up out of your mouth. You're going to speak it. Why? Because you see it. You're going to speak what you see according to the word and the promise of God. Real faith in the word says that if God says it is so, it's so. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Real faith in the word or what God says is this. If God says it's so, then it is so. Say that with me. If God says it is so, then it is so. Come on, say it again. Boldly say it. If God says it is so, then it is so. Glory. Come on, give yourself a hand clap. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's right. If God says it's so, then it is so. Amen. Glory be to God. Okay. So let me say this. So if he says, by whose stripes ye were healed, then what? We are healed. Okay, let's go to 1 Peter 2.24. See, faith sees the I, I'm going to go by. I'm not going to go by the pain in my body. Oh, I thank God for the doctor. I say, thank you, doctor, for your report. Thank you that I'm doing. But the Bible says I'm here. I'm going to say what Jesus said. I'm not going to go out and tell anybody. The doctor says I got six weeks to live. Will you pray for me? I'm going to die. Come on. Why do you want somebody to get in agreement with that? 
Why would you go and get in agreement with Say, doctor, I thank you for that report, but I believe by Jesus' stripes I'm here. I say I'll live and not die, and I'm going to declare the works of the Lord. That's up to you, church. Come on, saints, it's up to you. What are you going to get in agreement with? What are you going to see? You're going to see yourself dying or you're going to see yourself being healed? You're going to see yourself the one that the miracle come in and God raise you up or you're going to see yourself dying off? See, I see myself totally and completely healed. I see the power of God working through me, correcting everything in my body, causing everything in my body to function and operate the way God completed it to function, complete complete or created it to function. It is going to be completed to function that way. I believe whatever's going on in my body, God is going to correct it by his spirit. Some of the things that might be going on in your body and my body, we don't even know about. We don't even know all the different parts, but I believe God, he's the creator. He knows how to repair and replace everything in my body that needs to be repaired and replaced. And I'm trusting him to do it and to manifest it in Jesus name. Why? Because he's my healer. I'm already healed. Devil, no, I'm healed. I've said I'm healed. I'm totally and completely healed. Whatever needs to be lined up, whatever needs to be adjusted, I thank God the Spirit of God is doing it in my body right now in Jesus' name. And that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. I'm not telling you to deny the pain or deny the symptoms. You just ignore them. You know how to do that. You know, you go to church, you listen to your pastor. Many of you, you ignore certain things the pastor say, especially when it's time to give tithes and offer. You, you, you act like you don't hear it. See, what are you doing? You ignoring it. You ignoring it. That's the same way you do with your body with sickness and disease. We're not telling you to deny it. We're telling you to ignore it. And we're telling you to look and, and, and hold on to the promise of God. Amen. That's what you and I do. So look over here in 1 Peter 2 and 24. See, preacher, sometimes we get to talking and we ain't turning to the scriptures. But thank God, I'm glad you got there before me. 1 Peter 2, 24 says, who his own self, who talking about Jesus, whom his own, whom, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Jesus did that for you and I. He bared our sins. He didn't have no sin. It was, he took our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins. See, now we being dead to sins should live on to righteousness. Righteousness is live on to right standing with God. You and I now, because of Jesus, he, he who knew no sin became, was, be, became or was made sin for us that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. What? That we just be in right standing with God. And then it says, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now I want to ask you this. If ye were healed, is that past, present, or future tense? That's past tense. So if you were healed, that means you and I, we are healed. Now watch this. I know this is not proper grammar, but you'll get it. If I were healed, then that means I am healed. That means you are healed now, and that means I'm is right now. How many of you got that? See, if you were, that's past tense. So if you were, that means you are and if I, if, if that means that I are or I am, that means I'm is what I is. I am healed right now. So I got to get in agreement with that. I have to see that. I have to see that I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus. I see it. I see it. I see that I'm healed. See, you have to see it. And then you speak it. Faith sees. Okay. The answer. And then faith speaks the answer. Why? Because you have what you say. The same spirit of faith, we believe, therefore we speak. You and I, we believe, therefore we speak. Look, don't get so upset. Don't try to fight the process. You couldn't even get saved without that. You have to confess. You have to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And then you have to believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And then the Bible says you'll be saved. See, you have to speak it. You confess it with your mouth. You believe it in your heart. Same principle all the time. We go back to Mark 11, 23. It's a guaranteed principle. It's the way God set up the system. It's not me. God set the system up. And if you don't work it, a lot of times people say, well, I believe God and, and I did the word and it don't work. No, no, no. Don't tell that lie. Don't tell that lie. Maybe you are not working 
the system right or the laws of God's right. And this is a law of God. You have to believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. Don't look at me as God. That's the way he created it. That's the way he set up the system. So for you and I, we just obey God and do what he says to do. Amen. I said, amen. I said, amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Now let's go to Philippians and look at Philippians 419. Faith sees the answer and faith also speaks the answer. Philippians. Thank you, Jesus. Let me find Philippians. I'm going the wrong way. Okay. Philippians. Go back. Philippians. The way you find these little books, sometimes I say to myself, Gentiles eat pork chops. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. That's how I remember. That's how I know how them little books, epistles come in order. Gentiles eat pork chop. All right. Hallelujah. Relax. This, that's just me. That's what helps me out. Okay. So look over here at Philippians 4 and verse 19. What does it say? It says, but my God, who? Not you, not I, but my God shall supply all your need according to what? His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If he says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. What did that mean? Then that mean he does it. He does it. If God, if that says that, then I believe God does it. See, if, if the Bible, if Paul wrote this, being led by the Spirit of God to say that my God meets all my needs, then what? I believe God meets all my needs. That's what I get in agreement with, that God meets all my needs. I am not going to sway from that. I'm not. See, I'm not going to let the circumstances come and move me because all of that stuff is temporary circumstances, pressure. See, you can look at your checkbook or you can look at the money in your bank account or what's in your pocket and you can get an agreement with that and say, I don't have enough or I don't have no money. Or you can say, no, God meets all my needs. Why? Because the things that are seen are temporary. That means they are subject to change. But the things which are not seen, that's the spiritual realm. See, people say, oh, is, the, is, 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 is the, the spiritual realm and the natural realm, is, is it the same? No, the spiritual realm is more real because everything we have here in the natural came out of the spiritual. So if God says he meets all your needs or the word says he's my God meets all my needs, need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, then that's what I'm going to say. And that's what I'm going to believe. And I'm going to throw my hands up and I'm going to keep confessing. Lord, I thank you. I believe all my needs are met. I believe all my needs are met. I'm going to look at my checkbook. Nope, I ain't going to be moved by what's in my checkbook. I'm not going to be moved what's in my bank account. I'm not going to be moved by what's in my wallet or in my pocket. I'm only going to be moved by the promise of God. You, that's our church, that's how dogmatic you have to get. Just like you trained yourself to say, see, a lot of us been saying what we see and we continue to get more of what we see. I never have enough money. Man, I don't have enough money. As soon as I get paid, it's gone and I never have enough. See, you keep saying and that's what keeps it. Why don't you say, when I get paid, I'm going to pray, bless and give my tithes and offerings where the Lord tell me to give them. And then I'm going to trust him for the increase. And I believe all my needs are met. I believe the windows of heaven are open. I believe God has poured me out blessings. There's not room enough to receive. And he also rebuked the devour for my sake. I thank you, Father, because I have given. It is given back onto me. Good measures, pressed down, shaken again and running over to men giving to my bosom. But I'm going to tell you what happens when you start to decide, when you make a decision to decide to live and walk by the word of God, the devil comes, tries to bring fear and pressure on you to give up and say, this is not working. No, don't ever get in agreement with the circumstances. The word is always working. It is always working. No matter what comes, you just hold on to the word of God. You keep believing the word of God. And you just keep exercising your faith. You constantly have to believe that this word is working. Okay. Next scripture we're going to go to, we're going to have to pick it up next week. That's in Psalms 27.1. And you say, wow, man, why is it? Because the clock. I'm running out of time. 
I got to be obedient to that clock. Amen. Well, look, I want to thank you for joining in with us. And I, I, I want to pray with you. Look, if you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, this is your opportunity. Because that's why we do this. We want you to know God. We don't want you to know. I want you to have a relationship with Jesus. So pray this prayer with me right now. Say, dear God in heaven, right now, in Jesus name, I give my life to you. I ask you to take my life. I ask you to use my life for your glory. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. Thank you, Father, for accepting me. And thank you that now I'm your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the family of God. Now, we're going to put an email address up there, too. Uh, please write us. Please let us know so we can pray for you. Get in a good Bible, believe in church, do what the word says. Amen. And then one other thing I'm going to ask you. I just want you to pray. I really mean this. I want you to pray. Pray and ask the Lord if you're supposed to partner with us. And if you're supposed to partner with us, email us. Okay? Two things. We want you to pray for us. Pray that we reach people with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray that God opens up more opportunities for us to share the gospel on other channels and other places. Pray that God open doors for us to go and do faith conventions or heal in schools and stuff. Amen? And then if the Lord tells you to support us financially, just do what he tells you to do. I don't care if it's a dollar to a million dollars or 10 million or a thousand or a hundred. Just obey what God tells you to do. We don't want you to do no more or no less than what God tells you to do. We just want you to obey the spirit of God in giving if that's what he told you to do. Amen. Okay. Well, look, we, we love each and every one of you. I wish every one of you that's behind them cameras, I wish I could see you, wish I could hug you and tell you how much God loves you and how much I love you. And we want you to win. That's why we do this. We want you to win. Okay? So share this with some family members, some friends, co-workers. Let them know. Come on in. Let's walk this walk of faith together and learn what God has to say. Now remember this, that God is exalted. Satan, that no good low down sap sucker, he is defeated. And Jesus, your Jesus and my Jesus, Jesus is Lord. See you next week. P-O-H. Peace out, homies and homieettes. God bless you. Bye.